Well, thank you guys. Before I start, I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you have watched the movie Straight Outta Compton? Okay, great. Well, let me tell you, I am Straight Outta Compton. That's right. My name is Dr. Teresa Ramirez, and it's such a great honor to be here today. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Yeah. All right. I, that's what I want to hear. Okay. So, I was born in Torrance, California, first generation Mexican-American, and also the first in my family to have graduated from college and to have obtained a PhD. So if I could do it, you guys could do it too. So here's just some pictures of me when I was a kid. Yes, I always like to smile. Um, and as you can see, I still seem, you know, look the same. Um, here I'm wearing my Compton shirt because I'm very proud of who I am, where I grew up. Not because I'm from Compton means that I have to be a certain way. No, I knew that I wanted to go for higher education. So I come from a hardworking, dedicated parents, which I have the pleasure of having them here today. My dad, Juan and Selena Ramirez. <laughs> to me, it's something very special because they get the opportunity to see what I do. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today. They migrated from Zacatecas, Mexico to Los Angeles back in the 1970s with the American dream. How many of you guys have a similar story? Thank you. We're here, and we're here to make a difference because our parents made that transition from being in one place and coming to another for our own benefit. So if, in order to reach for my goals, there was many steps. It wasn't really rosy, but there's also challenges that I had to overcome. But before, this is something that really is dear to my heart because I didn't know that years later, I was actually gonna become a scientist. So it started in the sixth grade at Benjamin O. Davis Middle School when I participated in my first science fair. Can you believe that? Sixth grade, 11 years old, where I was curious and I wanted to study, do seeds contain oil? Do you guys remember these kind of like cardboard um, poster boards? Yeah, the trifold, exactly. So I used that and I had my introduction, my hypothesis. Because of this, I was curious and I don't know, I was just excited about science, and I was awarded a third place. But again, not knowing that years later, I was actually gonna become a Latina scientist. I thought I was gonna become a pediatrician, because that's what we know, right? Either you go to medical school, you become a nurse, a teacher, a lawyer, business person. I wanted to become a pediatrician. But as I became open-minded, you'll see my, my trajectory, it changed. So then at Compton Senior High School, I graduated as a salutatorian honors, with honors back in 1998. I'm pretty young. That tells you kind of like my age, right? I was part of um, different programs there. But when I was at Compton Senior High School in the 11th grade, I had a counselor who saw the potential in me in becoming a successful person in the sciences. She said, you know, you're good in math and science. I'm going to nominate, nominate you to this program. It was a research program that opened my eyes to what was to come next. Um, because of that, I learned that at Cal State Dominguez Hills, um, there was the Minority Biomedical Research Support Program, MBRS program. Have you guys heard of the MBRS program? Have you heard of the RISE program? So it was sort of like the MBRS RISE program. And at Cal State Dominguez Hills, um, when I was before in Compton Senior High School, we had a person who was the um, recruiter for CSUDH. And she came one day to me and said, you know, we really would like to, to recruit you. And I said, yes, I'm interested, but do you guys offer scholarships? She said, yes, let me find out. This was a Thursday. On a Friday, she comes back to me and says, Teresa, here's the application for a scholarship, but it's due Monday. Can you have all the requirements ready? And I said, you know what? I'll get it ready. When Monday came, or no, yeah, Monday came, she picked it up and submitted it. I had everything ready. Months later, I got the Presidential Scholarship Award. It was a full right scholarship. So when, there, when you really want something, you'll make it happen. So because of that, I went to Cal State Dominguez Hills, and also through the program that my counselor nominated me, I became part of the MBRS program at Cal State Dominguez Hills. 
It didn't happen until the second try. The first try, as a freshman, I went knock, knock, knocking on the person who was in charge. She said, oh, no, um, you're still a, a freshman. Come when you're a sophomore. OK, sophomore year came, knock, knock. She's like, oh, you're here, you're back again. I said, yes, because I'm interested in this program. I was awarded that opportunity to be part of MBRS. Thanks to that opportunity and my um, undergrad um, advisor, who is Dr. Laura Robles, she introduced me to my first SACNAS back in 2000. So 16 years ago, again, I was in those same seats, listening to inspirational stories like the one that I'm giving you today, and just feeling like, wow, there's so much. It was quite overwhelming, let me tell you. But I took that opportunity to network. I took that opportunity just to learn and also connect to, with people that could become potential mentors. I was a little shy, believe it or not. I wasn't this way. But it takes time. And then after that, I took, took some time off where I did a post -bac program at the National Cancer Institute. And then I went and came back to California, worked for a little bit as a research tech at the University of Southern California and then decided that I wanted to go for a PhD. So I went to Brown University. Where is Brown University? Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, from California all the way to Providence, Rhode Island. So that's why I say straight out of Compton to an Ivy League. So if I can make it, guys, no excuse. You guys can also do the same thing. So as you see, my journey has not been a straight path. It's been very curvy, but I've been been able to enjoy the ride because every time there's something that comes upon that could be an obstacle, I see the positive side. One thing that could have really, really stopped me from pursuing even an education or gaining an education was back when I was in middle school. I was in the seventh grade in the last class of the day, about to start my work when this kid brought a gun to class. Yes, you heard, a gun. Unfortunately, it was loaded. When it was loaded, he wasn't a troublemaker, but he was showing it to other students. When he was showing this gun to someone else, he dropped it and it went off. And unfortunately, I was, my hand was on top of the table. It graced my left arm. Where's my heart? And my left side, right? It didn't hurt me anywhere else. It just graced my left arm. And unfortunately, it went in and out of another peer's um, leg. So that moment, it could have stopped my dream of gaining a higher education. But however, the next day, with a wrapped arm, I went to school. That didn't stop me. I had perfect attendance. And I wanted an education. Yes, I was from Compton, and it doesn't mean that Compton is such a bad city. No, it has a good thing as well. Where's the, the sisters, the Williams sisters? They're from Compton. You know, there's good things, but the media sometimes only portrays the bad stuff. So as I said, it hasn't been a straight path, and situations like that happened, but I always see the bright side. And when I see the bright side, I've been able to be successful and get to where I am. So from Rosecrans Elementary School, Benjamin O. Davis, Compton Senior High School, Cal State Dominguez Hills, graduated with honors. Then um, after that, I went to the NCI in Frederick, Maryland. First time in my whole entire life that I had moved from California, never thought that I would leave California. But my advisor, and as an undergrad, my research advisor, she told me, Teresa, you have to learn to spread your wings and you have to leave California. And I thought, why is she telling me this? I love California. I was born in California. I want to stay here. But I'm glad that I listened to her because now I can go anywhere and I could always come back home because this is my sweet, sweet home. Then I came to USC, then Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. And now I live in um, Rockville. I work at the National Institutes of Health. I did a postdoc post um, fellowship there in alcohol research, but now I transition to genetics and science education. So my education, as I said, I got a BS in general biology, postbac, research tech at USC. It's just giving you more details, but one of the research that I do is liver research. We look at how alcohol and aging affects the liver. How, do you guys know where your liver is located? Right or left? Right, thank you. So your, your liver has this brown, reddish color, but when you intake a lot of alcohol, then it becomes a pale, pale color, 
But then when there's excessive alcohol drinking every day for many years, over 10 to 20 years, um, it can become cirrhotic. So there's no cure. Once you're here, there's no way back. If you're here and you stop, then there's a possibility that you can go back to its normal state. This is just electron micrographs that show how the liver looks in the normal and with alcohol. So there's fatty liver, right? Fat is these round circles here. This is fatty liver. Anyway, so my research involved to study the effects of how chronic alcohol consumption and aging played a role um, that induced alcoholic liver disease. And one thing that we're really interested in is finding ways to prevent this, finding mechanisms that are involved in which we can prevent further liver injury. And there's about 15,000 to 20,000 deaths per year that are due to alcoholism. And in men, there's four or more drinks that are considered to be alcoholics, or women, three or more drinks a day. And you know, it's interesting because when I look back at my career path, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, Felipe Galvez, unfortunately passed due to alcoholism. And he had a brain tumor. And one thing that I learned as I was doing alcohol research, as a grad student, that's when it all started, um, I learned that he, I mean, he passed away due to a brain tumor, but it was due to alcoholism because there's this thing called the liver and brain axis. And when I was in grad school, that takes me to another story that I wanted to share with you, is that in my third year of grad school, I had to switch labs. I had to start over again. Another thing that happened my third year of grad school was when I was told by a professor at Brown University that she didn't think I had the skills to be in a PhD program, that with a master's degree, I could make such a big difference in my Latino community. How do you guys think I felt? It felt like somebody has stepped on me, but you know what? It's okay, remember, from a negative, we turn it to a positive, right? Um, the first person I called was my mother, and I was devastated. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I heard this. But she gave me the, the strength that I needed. And she said, no, mija, remember, you're going to be facing this wherever you go, but you have to learn to have a, your head up and be able to lift up from if you fall. I said, yeah, my mother is very, very true. She, yeah, she just pointed exactly what I needed to do. So I said, you know what, I'm here for a reason. I'm at Brown University, and I'm going to continue. People have the right to have an opinion, right? But you have to be determined, and you have to know what you want in life, not allowing anybody to tell you what you're capable of doing or not. So because of that, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to look for a new lab. I have to do well because I want to graduate. If not, I felt like they were going to kick me out of the program. Like I was going through all these emotions. But when I joined this research lab that did alcohol research, I thought, wow, this connects back to like my family, my grandfather. Who would have thought that years later I would be here doing alcohol research, which is not going to help him because he already passed away, but hopefully my research is going to help those who suffer from alcoholism. Because there's a lot of alcoholism in the Latino community, in the community that I grew up, some of our family and friends, right? So to me it was like, wow, that's an awesome connection to make that even though I'm not helping him, but I'm going to be helping others. So I do a lot of um, volunteer work with science education because I'm really passionate about sharing my story, being from Compton, que si se puede, yes you can, going and talking to different coasts from the west coast to the east coast, midwest, there's no border for me. I talk to any students from different cultures and I've mentored many students around the world. But every time I get a chance to come back to Compton, what do I do? I visit the schools that I went to and I talk to the kids because that's that connection that I have. And I can relate and whatever I say, it's because it's coming from the heart. And I also oh, established a Brown Sackness chapter. I was a founder and the first president. And I'm now currently part of the NIH Sackness chapter. I'm the co-vice president. So I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my mentors and for my parents. As you can see, these are just a few of, the, few of my mentors, but I have mentors from different cultures, both male and females. And the middle is Dr. Laura Robles, the person who introduced me to SACNAS. And in 2005, she bought my life membership. So I'm a life member, and then I, I bought my own um, for the 
Friends of the Society. So I'm both a life member and Friends of the Society. But thanks to Dr. Laura Robles who introduced me to SACNAS. And this is my grandfather, the one that I was talking about. So as you can see, um, yes, I graduated from Brown University, one of the most happiest days of my life. Uh, you could see it through my smile, and also very proud of my culture, being Mexican-American and the first in my family. Here you could see, oh my gosh, I was so excited. I can't explain the feeling, so I want to see you all go through this same feeling. Here, I'm just doing my research, doing tissue sectioning, just working in the lab, but also became part of the Brown Mariachi. Yes, I was part of the Brown Mariachi. When I first heard the mariachi music, when I was in Providence, Rhode Island, I was like, oh my gosh, this is my music. This brings me home. I want to be part of it. But then when they asked me, they're like, what instrument do you play? Uh, I don't play an instrument. I could try to sing. So I was one of the singers. And one of the things that, oh, you want? <laughs> and one of the things that, that I really was proud of was that my first opportunity when I had um, the opportunity to publish my, my research work, which is a requirement as part of grad, graduate school to publish one first author, meaning that you're the person that took the lead in conducting the experiments and writing the manuscript. This was the advisor that gave me the opportunity to do the alcohol research. And in July of 2012, I published my first, first author publication. So this brings back to, remember that person that told me that I couldn't do it? I was publishing already. And by the time when I finished, I had published three first author publications. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So one thing that I want to tell you all is to never give up on your dreams. You have to be persistent. You have to be productive, determined, resilient, optimistic, enthusiastic, and assertive. So whenever you're told no, it's OK. There's other ways that you can reach your goal. Even if it's not a straight path, there's always a way to get to where you need to be. Never be embarrassed of your culture. Embrace it, like I have done throughout these years of being proud of being Mexican, Mexican-American. Also, make sure that you surround yourself with positive people, people that believe with you, that believe in you, and if you do something, that are happy for you. You don't want to be in close to people who are jealous. Jealousy can stay out the door. You need positive people. And also, never burn bridges. Like with this person that told me that I couldn't make it, we're still in touch. I'm OK. We're still in contact because I help students. And she didn't stop me, and it's not going to stop me. It's OK. She could still be part of my life. Make a difference in your, com in your community, regardless of your age. And be sure to share those talents that you have. You are all very talented. I don't care if you're coming from a community college. I don't care if it takes you five, 10 years. The point is that you get to the end, regardless of the time that it's going to take you. I felt like I was in school forever. <laughs> but when I reached my, the point where I graduated with my PhD, that feeling was really the best, best feeling. Because it wasn't only for me, but it was also for my parents. So we'll be proud of who you are. And never, please, promise me, allow anybody to tell you that you can do it. You're your own judge. You know what you can do. And si se puede. Claro que si se puede. Yes, you can. And one thing I want to leave you with is one of my favorite quotes uh, from Dr. Seuss. Do you guys know all the places you go? OK. So it says, congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. And I couldn't, I couldn't leave you without this. <laughs> Straight out of Compton to an Ivy. So another quote that I really, really like is from Sonia Sotomayor, the first Latina Supreme Court justice in the US. It says, I do know one thing about me. I don't measure myself by others' expectations or let others define my worth, so please. Adelante, and this is my beautiful Compton, Compton Courts. 
the uh, Martin Luther King Memorial. Y muchas gracias. There's my email. You can always contact me. And thank you very much.